All right, so let's take a look at an example here using implicit differentiation. Um, the, the curve defined by this equation is, is plotted in the textbook. There's a nice looking graph there if you want to see what it, what it looks like. Um, but here we're just interested in how do we actually find this y prime? So that if we were interested in computing the slope of the tangent line at some point on this curve, in principle we could do it. Um, and you'll notice one big difference between this problem and the one that we just looked at, you're, you're not going to be able to solve here for y as a function of x, right? Solving for y here is, is algebraically impossible. It's not going to be done, right? Unlike the circle where, yes, we could solve for y. Um, the only thing you could reasonably do here is um, you could solve for x as a function of y, right? Um, we could... Uh, we could move the x cubed over, bring this to the other side, take cube roots, we would have x as a function of y, and we could just turn the tables and, and proceed, right? Write x as a function of y and take the derivative using the chain rule. That's fine. That would give us, I guess, dx dy, and, you know, if we wanted dy dx, take the reciprocal. Flip it over, you'd have the answer. But let, let's, let's try it. You know, the goal here is to learn implicit differentiation, so let's not look for shortcuts. Um, let's do the problem as it's presented. So the reminder here is that we're assuming There is some f so that y equals f of x satisfies the equation, right? This is, this is the primary assumption you're making when you're doing implicit differentiation, that sine of f of x plus f of x cubed is equal to 6 minus x cubed. So there's an equality of two functions of x. Um, and then with that assumption, we rely on the fact that the chain rule then dictates that if you have some function of y, right, well, that's really a function of x because we're thinking of, of y as a function of x, right? And so this is a composition, and we know how to take derivatives of compositions, right? Chain rule says the derivative of g of f of x is g prime at f of x times f prime of x. But we try to save ourselves some writing, so instead of putting all this, we simply say g prime of y, we leave that as a y, times y prime, okay? So coming over to here, we take the derivative of both sides, and we see what we get. So the derivative of sine is cosine, but here we're in exactly this scenario. We've taken the derivative of some function of y, and any time you take the derivative of a function of y, you multiply by y prime. Right? Same thing for the y cubed. The derivative of y cubed is 3y squared, but we have to multiply by y prime. Okay. The other side's a little bit more straightforward. 6 is a constant. The derivative of x cubed is 3x squared. All right. Now, the next step is, you know, we want y prime, so we have to solve for it. And you'll see that there's more than one term that has y prime. Um, now, there is some algebra involved, but the good news is that y prime is always going to show up alone, like this, right, as a multiple because of the chain rule. There's never going to be like a y prime squared or something like that. So you're never going to have to use quadratic formula or any advanced algebraic technique to copy, to, to solve for y prime. You simply have to factor it out, right? And sometimes maybe there's a y prime over there. You've got to collect terms before you can factor. But all you got to do is really factor it out. So we see that there are two things here being multiplied by y prime. So we take out the common 
factor of y prime. That leaves us with cos y plus 3y squared equal to minus 3x squared. And so finally, to solve for y prime, we just have to divide by what's left over here. So we have minus 3x squared over cos y plus 3y squared. And then we're done.